From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up! What is up, everybody? It is Wake Up War Chant. It is presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill in Tallahassee, Florida. CPTallyBar.com is the website. Check it out. And then while you're on the internet, go to WarChant.com. It's only $1 still somehow, defying all the odds. Sign up for WarChant.com for an entire year for only $1. Thumbs up, five-star rating and review as well, please. We got a busy, busy show. Coming up on today's show, Renegade Express. So many questions, so little time. We, though, as always, brought to you by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill in Tallahassee. Busy day for Corey. He's uh, not in Tallahassee, but I'm sure if he was, he would like to take a load off at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Our guy, I, I don't know how you do it, man. This whole, although like Austin, dude, apparently our guy Austin drives up from Tampa at like 4 in the morning to catch practices. But you two, you road warriors, I don't know how you guys do it. Thanks for doing what you guys do. You keep this I, thing moving. I definitely don't do that. Um, God bless Austin. Yeah, but yeah, man. you know, I, I'm, I'm back up uh, with Brady. Came up for a a few days here. It's going to be I'm not going to be able to be up here much through the first. It's such an odd start to the season that I'm not going to be able to be up here as much as I'd like uh, those first couple weeks. So I figured I'd take I'd knock four or five days out, come up here, see what what, what kind of trouble he's getting into, buddy. And uh, got pretty good news. Well, real good news from my doctor. Well, I, I guess a doctor's assistant. It wasn't. Technically, the surgeon that worked on me, but the she definitely knew what she was assistance. talking about. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Um, she said that uh, that uh, everything looked good in my gallbladder recovery, and that I'm uh, I'm able to now go work out again full time. Let's go! All yep. right, yep. let's go! And not only that, I showed her because I you know I had to pull my shirt up to Ooh. show her the scars oh, so yeah. she could check, uh-huh. and um, she's like because uh, she was telling me about the dangers like if i was uh you know i was like what what would be the risk if i lifted too much right now she's like well you, you might be more susceptible to a hernia oh, yeah. um but that kind of comes with a territory when you're lifting weights anyway she goes but usually we reserve that a warning for people that are people that smoke and uh she goes you don't smoke do you and i go no and she goes that people are obese and you're clearly not that you're in great shape mm. and i'm like Thank you, lady. Yeah. That's nice to say. I really think I really appreciate you saying that. That's and fine. I kept my shirt off. Okay. I wasn't putting it back on. Why? Why let her? Uh, why? 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 Why cover what I've been working so hard at, Aslan? That's and right. what, what? Everybody wants Show to see off. these little scars on my stomach. Show it off. Uh, two more practices remaining in preseason for Florida State. Not a lot of talk about from Thursday's practice. It was very light. Just a shade over an hour. Mainly special teams. They weren't in shells. They just had helmets on. Uh, so really not a lot to talk about. Not really any big news either from talking to Mike Norvell, but you could always go to warchant.com and check it out. We we do find meat on the bone. You didn't really somehow. sell it, though. You didn't do well, a good job of selling that well, this, one. Well, this is the thing. We really didn't, there wasn't a lot to talk about. There just wasn't. Well, you, and we've got, you should have told him there's an incredible nugget only for tribal council members. Is there? I didn't even – you guys only told Well, no, there's things. not, but okay. you could have told him that. Okay. You could the bait and switch. Oh, we but don't do the that. The thing is, it's not, it's not really a bait and switch because even if there's not a great nugget in there – Right now, this morning, as you're listening to this, there will be later on, and there will be there uh, sprinkled weekly throughout the football season. And you're going to want to be on the message boards to see the stuff that maybe we don't put out for public consumption. Only our, our subscribers get, get a taste. There's nothing I can say further and more forcefully with my chest than at some point over the 365 days that you remember of WarChant.com, you'll be like, wow, that was worth my dollar. So... Go there ahead. Go. Oh, and, and, and I went on the I, I hadn't been able to get on the message boards uh, the last, I don't know, 48 hours or so, which I'm, I'm I'm much better about it now than I was at the old site. I'm getting on there a lot. I'm trying to interact. Mm. But I did see there was a thread uh, uh, not calling me out, but the thread had my name in the title and said, oh. this is why you're what is it like? This it's is why Dion. you're wrong about Dion. Yeah. yeah. Let me see what it said. Well, just we the got, thread title. Uh, okay. He we goes, Corey some. Clark, I disagree, and as a whole, the Dion coaching hype is a bit much. That's the title of the thread. But in his in his post, he has three very nice, polite disclaimers saying, by the way, Corey did, did not say he wants Dion to be the head coach. He's rooting for Mike Norvell. Right. This isn't about what he said because what he's you know it was there were nice disclaimers. Okay. 
And I'm like, that's, and I interacted. I just, I just answered his question. I got on there and it kind of explained myself a little bit. Nice. That's the stuff you get on the tribal council, man. That's right. That's right. Yep. Aslan, I saw you, somebody had asked you something on the message boards too. So you get to interact with us a little bit more um, on, on the tribal council, as long with Gene and, and Ira, and then obviously Michael and Austin on the recruiting board as well. Okay. We got to get to it. Uh, not even six hours. The thread was up. We had over 40 replies. You people are crazy. We love it. Okie Knoll starts us off. Wake oh, up. that's what I meant to say. Hold on real quick. Oh. Sorry. The Corey Clark thing has 181 replies. Okay. It has been viewed over 2000 times. So that's the kind of interaction we're having over there, guys. I, now I, I didn't read the whole thing. I saw the original post. I replied to that and daddy bounced out, but I do appreciate the, uh, the conversation. Corey Clark equals ratings, everybody. So, mm, uh, amen. All amen. right, Oki Knoll, um, he's so excited for the LSU game that he simulated the game on NCAA 14 with updated rosters. The Knolls came out on top in New Orleans 30-20. to 20. Hopefully that will be reality. Mm, okay. I just, I'm just i starting to imagine like how awesome it would be if we do beat LSU. It would be awesome. Uh, that's as I'm talking. My question is, why do we spend— I want to know how long it took him to do that, to, to ro load up the rosters in, in, on 2014. Because don't I, you have to build like Jordan Travis from scratch? I think people still do these things. You can download, and there's people that are hardcore that do it, and you can just kind of go oh, online okay. and download right. it and stuff like that. So Back in my day, you had to literally— I don't even know how I found these people on the Internet, but somehow I did— and then you would physically ship them your memory card for your Xbox with like a $5 bill in that. They would put it on the memory card and then it would send it back to you. So you had to like send them a self-addressed stamped envelope and a $5 bill and your memory card and mail it out. Uh, you kids Those don't even know how days. good you have it. You kids don't yeah. know how good you have it. His question is, why do we spend so much money on the Champions Club when I barely see anyone's... Oh, not this question. Anyone set up there during hey, game days? Rude. Well, no, I mean, just, you know, we, we, got a, we got a game week. We got a season coming up. And these are things that, you know... I don't know what was the ultimate goal of Champions League. Was it to be like a, an economic driver, like everyone's going to start signing up, sitting in there, paying premium dollars, and then we could turn around and use that money to just reinvest in the program? He says that money could be used to get players, but we didn't know about that. Okino, we didn't know this nil stuff yeah. was going to happen. Um, what about it's facilities versus getting players? I am a little bit more facilities leaning. Corey is definitely a getting players person when it comes. Well, to only in this job. finite amount of time that it, it, you can before they come up with some sort of regulation, um, go ahead and use the money to acquire a talent, not acquire facility, not build buildings. Um, but I will say I had a conversation with uh, two season ticket holders uh, the other night at Corner Pocket, as a matter of fact, and we were talking about the Champions Club. And, you know, they, they both have sat in there. I think one of them still has season tickets in there. And the idea was a fine idea. The idea um, has made money. I think they make. I, I. I mean, they make money with that thing. There, there are people that are that buy those tickets. It's just the people that buy those seats um, don't sit in them. They sit in the. They they stand in the Champions Club in there because it's air conditioned. It's beer, wine, food. It's like being in a restaurant watching the game right in front of you out the window. So that's what they do. My idea would be maybe don't make those seats part of the champions club then like i i don't know what else to do because as i as i was explaining to my friend because he was explaining why they couldn't do it on the on the on the uh the 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 box opposite of the press box that it would have had to it would have taken so much more reconstruction to do that i was like man that's fine i get it it's just horrible optics just looks bad it looks bad. even when they sell it out even when clemson comes and florida comes this year, and they, they're, they're, it will be a sellout or close to it. That thing is going to look empty, and it's on TV. Anytime somebody kicks a field goal in that direction, you see thousands of empty seats. They're not empty. They've been paid for. Those seats have been paid for. Nobody is sitting in them. So, But I don't know what you do. I don't know what you do about it. But to answer the question, they are most of those seats are sold. Maybe all of them. I don't know. They, they do a, I know they sell a good bit of those seats. It's just that the people that bought them typically don't go down there and sit there because it's hot, it's it's hot out there it's hot. Know. it's hot yeah it's hot it's not as it's loud no. you know uh mac factor enols 16 wake up long time listener new member could not pass up the dollar deal lifelong Knoll fan grew up in colorado but have spent my entire adult life in rural nebraska no famous people i'm aware of i've seen fsu play once when they beat colorado in boulder 16 to 6 2007 hope to get the tally for a night game at doke maybe get some zaxby's Sorry for the long intro. 
Not at all. I read that quickly oh, and yeah. clearly. Good stuff, Mac. Welcome. Here's my question. I like this question. I saw this beforehand. What duo completes more one-on-one passes versus Deion Sanders when both are in their prime? Jameis and Kelvin versus Dion. Winky and Warwick versus Dion. How many out of ten reps would each duo get? Thanks for all the content and coverage. Go, Knowles. That's a good one. I will I will say Kelvin and Jameis will split five and five. And I will say that um, I think Winky and Warwick, I'm going to go, they'll get four out of ten on Dion. The thing that I would be worried about with Winky and Warwick is, um, like, Dion's faster than anybody. Like, it's not like, I mean, it just doesn't matter. Warwick wasn't blazing, blazing fast, but he was fast. He had that incredible shake, though. But I think what Dion would do is if he's just running a deep post or something, Dion would let Warwick get open, knowing that Winky doesn't quite have the arm strength to throw it to where he can't go catch up and intercept it. Mm. I think he would deke Winky into some deep throws, and then he'd, he'd uh, make up that ground very quickly and go intercept it. Kelvin, I just don't know what you do with the size. It's just a tough matchup, man. Dion was 6'1". He's a tall corner, um, and he could jump. Clearly a pretty good athlete. But uh, I don't know. what I think that would be the best bet is that you could just lob it up to him and he might make five. Because he made some, I mean, Kelvin made some incredible catches. Like he would go high point the thing like 11 feet off the ground. He'd just make incredible catches that you just can't defend. Uh, case in point, the first touchdown against Clemson. Uh, th- you can't defend those things. So I would say Kelvin, but I don't know, man. Peter Warwick is, imagine Garden covering him one-on-one with the cuts he could make. And the knee, bre- the, the the ankle breakers, and the knee breaking moves he had. Good question. I can't answer. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's like making me choose a uh, my favorite kid. Well, it's actually pretty easy. It's Brady. Yeah. It's only got anyway. One. Go ahead. Yeah, I only got the one. Uh, but Jordan Travis and Johnny Wilson would complete seven out of ten on Dion. So fair, fair. Maybe yeah. nine, especially Dion now. Hmm. Let's uh, tie these two together. They're similar. We'll go our guy, Jason. Uh, right, let me, sorry, sorry. That was not a knock at Dion's. I, I just remembered. Oh, man, come on now. He's he's missing a couple toes. That was not a knock oh, at I didn't even realize his, his, yeah. his injury, his, his health scare from last year. It was a knock on his age. I didn't want people to think I was making fun of him for not having some toes. Yeah. I know a lot of you guys don't like, uh, you dislike Dion right now. Uh, I don't. I don't think Corey does either, but I won't. Corey doesn't have to say anything. We Corey can keep his Q rating as high as possible right mm. now. I'll take the I'll take the arrows. All right, Jay Spiz, wake up, guys. What's up, Aslan and Corey? It's almost time. It's time. Uh, so my question for the week is: Who do you want to win between Miami and Texas A and M? I have a love hate relationship with Jimbo Fisher. He brought us back to the glory land. I'm grateful for that. But then he quit on us and basically started this mess we've been in. To read that stuff. That everything comes out of my mouth is a fact, everybody. That included. Uh, with that being said, I still want them to spank those canes. I'm so tired of hearing about them all season. Um, isn't this the same team that went seven and five last year? Before uh, last year, De'Aaron King was a Heisman candidate, and we see how that worked out for them. I'd like to get y'all's thoughts. Go Knowles. Yeah, I'm a root for Jimbo. I don't, know, I don't want to root for Jimbo as much as I'm rooting against Miami. Is that the correct answer, right, Corey? I think that's the perfect answer. Now, yeah. you will be rooting for Jimbo, but right. uh, most people, I think, would rather Jimbo win that game than Cristobal, mm. I, I would think. I would just think that's the the natural order of things. Um, as much as you might like Jimbo for quitting on your team like he did, oh, um, still, I think that you would appreciate him knocking the Canes down a peg because they got pretty high expectations this year. No boy. Oh, two. Where is that game? Is that game in a, at a and I think so. College station. Hey, kudos for Miami, man. They still do it. They still just go do home and homes. Or I, I, maybe it's not even a home and home. They'll go on the road and play tough games. Good for them. No boy. Oh, two used to be JT Knowles, two K two. Hey guys, wake up. We are currently Clint Trickett days away from the first game. Um, uh, although I'm almost always positive, I'll just... What a number nine to choose. <laughs> That's awesome. I would call Kendall Pope, personally. Yeah, uh, that would have worked. Toa Feely. Yeah. Uh, I'm almost always positive. I'll just let out some negativity here just this one time. My question, what is the worst opening game in FSU history? Uh, it's a lot of sadly interesting choices. His pick is 2019 Boise. Uh, it was going to be in Jacksonville, but then we got into Tallahassee. We're up huge, 31-13. Texting yeah. my friends, we're back. And then the second half happened. 
couldn't recover a fumble, couldn't score, couldn't stop them. I still remember listening to this fine program after the comments and the opening song was Don't Drink the Water. Uh, nice mm. pick, Aslan. Anyways, I apologize for my long rant. It's just that I consider the Boise State game to be the most frustrating game of my lifetime. You're younger. That's not the right answer, but maybe of your generation. I still think maybe Virginia Tech was even more sobering, but the correct answer is, Corey? Uh, 1988 Miami. Yes. But, uh, I mean, those are those are two humdingers for Willie. Yeah. yeah. You know, those were, I mean, all the expectations he had to start the year, his first game, and they scored a grand total of three points. And then on national TV. First and drive, then the next too, time. right? Wasn't it the first drive? No, it was late in the second quarter. And no, oh, yeah, Nooney Murray scored a touchdown, yeah. he, and he didn't review it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the next one was that debacle against Boise State. And everything afterwards with a dehydration and him mockingly dripping. I mean, that's up there, man, when you think about everything. The, yeah. the blown lead, the, the mild controversy about him saying they were dehydrated and and then him doing the thing with the water on uh, like after Tuesday before Tuesday's practice or whatever it was that was a uh, it was all not a great a great time there for for Willie and the Knowles. But yes, it's 1988 Miami, number one in the country. Florida State was opener against Miami. They had just lost to him in a crazy game the year before by a point. Miami had won the national championship, then lost a lot of that team. It's in the Orange Bowl, sure, but you're like this team is loaded. They did the Seminole rap. They were feeling really confident, and they lost 31 to zero. And they didn't lose again, but that was a uh, very humbling, humiliating opener for the Knowles. Yeah, that game's on YouTube. Uh, I watched like the first quarter, and then I was like, I can't do this. It hurts of the uh, of the eighty eight game. Yeah, 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 yeah. On a lighter note, support the sponsors, support the players that have YouTube accounts and their merchandise, support the staff and Warchant. It's only a dollar. Let's go Knowles. P.S. Is in the coop with Robert Cooper going to be sponsored by Zaxby's? I think it's a perfect match. Um, want to wish a happy birthday to the artist formerly known as Aslan Hodges. Best of luck this year, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. It is not going to be sponsored by Zaxby's. It's going to be powered by Rising Spear, uh, who is mm. supporting over 100 Florida State athletes across nine different sports. So basically that's going to be kind of a platform to show everybody how cool uh, NIL is. And if you're a local business and you think, oh, wow, we could probably use somebody as gregarious and cool as Robert Cooper to come sell something for us. Um, yeah, then reach out to the folks at Rising Spear. And if you watch it, go to their website, sign up for like monthly uh, you know, withdrawals out of your bank account to help be the lifeblood of the program. Maybe it's a one-time fee. Um, yeah. Mark. So is August 19th your birthday? Yeah. yeah. So it's today. We made it. Yeah. yeah You're 40. Me, yeah, me, Bill Clinton, Coco Chanel. Uh, okay, man. Strong company. I got Donald Trump is, uh, shares my, my birthday. And so an, we both got presidents. And a federal holiday, right? Flag day. Flag day, man. Nobody ever goes to school on, on flag day. Um, I was going to say, do you feel any different? Do you feel, are you, are you, are you, uh, being, are you weird about it? Turning 40? It's a big I, number, man. It is. It is. Um, yeah. I just think about like how much more this is going to make dating difficult when I'm like, I'm 40 and it's like, Oh, and you've never been married. Like, Nope. Like you've never yeah. been in a relationship that's like longer than like a year. Like, Nope. Yeah. But I yeah. promise I'm not crazy though. Sure. Well, all right. Just yesterday, you could say you're in your 30s, too. Yeah. But those days are over. But I feel good. I look all right, too, man. So, you know, that's good. You don't look 40, if that, yeah. mean, if that means yeah. anything. Thanks, you. Thanks bud. Uh, Appreciate it. Check when I up. turned 40, uh, Jeff Cameron told me that uh, since I already looked 50, it was going to be a great decade for me. <laughs> oh, so, Jeffrey. With friends like that. Indeed. Mark Naples, M. Adam CZ. Wake up. Going back and forth as we await this season. Every game on the schedule is winnable. Two years ago, we would circle two or three games on the schedule as automatic losses and probable blowouts. Now, we have a team with depth that appears to have a chip on his shoulder. Better at almost every position, and as Corey pointed out this week, if we score an extra touchdown per game, we'll win eight to nine games. Uh, if we score an extra touchdown per game and we win eight to nine games last year, and not with a great roster. To me, we get through LSU and Louisville at 3-0, and Boston College and Wake come to town, the world is our proverbial oyster. NC State Clemson, tough, but why not? Why not us? I'm starting to sip the Kool-Aid. Talk me off the ledge. Or maybe my gut is right and we can have a special season. Go, Knowles. See you in a couple of weeks in the Big Easy. If you're sipping the Kool-Aid, you don't need to stand on a ledge. <laughs> if we're just, if we're right. just going by what those uh, what those metaphors down. mean. Yeah, um, yeah man, I... I 
I, I five and zero. Oh, I just I can't allow myself to think something like that. I'm trying to be a pragmatist and be a realist, even though they are better. Um, it is not. Let's not pretend it's going to just be a walk in the park to roll into New Orleans and beat LSU. Well, better I mean, teams they, don't win every game either, right? You know, yes, so. correct. Uh, so they, I mean, and they do have players, man, and they are going to be. It's the first year, first game uh, for the quarterback, first game for the head coach, first game for the OC. But they're all good at what they do. Um, maybe the QB is a little more. But we know Brian Kelly can coach. We just know he can. So uh, it's just not going to be easy. And then Louisville, no idea. No idea. None. I mean, that guy's a good quarterback. Um, and they, they beat you each of the last two years. Uh, really dominated you two years ago and was were beating the bejesus out of you at halftime last year. So you don't really have a reason to feel ultra confident about that game either because they might have gotten better. I think if you can get through that first five-game stretch, three and two? You're you're okay. You're feeling okay. Four and one. You're like yes, sir. We're we're we we're doing some things. We might even be we're close to being ranked. Why aren't they ranked us? Why aren't they ranked us yet? Mm. But the problem is, if you're three and two after that first five game stretch, your next two games are at NC State and Clemson. No. So what do you think? At best, you finish that four and three, and then you're you know you're you're hovering around five hundred. We which we want we don't want you to be hovering around five hundred. So. I would say those first five games. Go ahead and go four and one. That's yeah. where you want to be. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I didn't look at the weights and the heights, but you know, there's a local television reporter out in Baton Rouge who posted highlights from uh, their scrimmage, but not, they, not the actual scrimmage. But I guess they practiced a little bit before the scrimmage. They did one on ones, uh, and you're seeing like you know Butte and some of these other guys going up against their DBs, and they just they still just look cut a little bit different than what we are and i don't know did if you Garn see boote because i didn't see him. if he's number one i didn't see him he was tagged, i know the guy he was tagged he, i know the guy tweet. tagged him yeah yeah so i figured but i didn't see there. him i didn't see him making any of those catches now some of them were very impressive but i didn't see number one uh in that clip yeah um but yeah just, they just look large man they just look big and like their tight end like made some freaking phenomenal catches and you know just cuts. It's like wow, that's gonna be tough to. Yeah, their tight end looks like he could be a bit of a bit of an issue. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it looks like uh, Butte's rocking seven now um, from the offense. So I guess. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Then yes, I did see him, and yeah, he was pretty impressive. Yeah. So. Um, Why'd you keep telling us he wasn't going to play, Aslan? Well, he just you know, two surgeries. I mean, he's out there, but hey, we've we've seen guys out there practicing, and then they they're not who they used to be. So we'll just we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. Just be balanced. But yeah, I guess right now, absolutely think that we'll be five and zero. What's what's the harm in that? Um, because you're used to things not going your way the last four years, so you'll be able to you'll be able to adapt and cope on the on the fly. But right. regardless, LSU New Orleans week is going to be a fun week for all of us. And golly, if they win, just the dreams that we can all dream together. I can't wait. Shady Knoll twenty five. Wonder if he's a Lashawn McCoy fan. Um, twenty five Shady. I don't know. Wake up. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, wasn't that his number? Yeah. By the way, somebody yeah. uh, DM'd me asking for fantasy football advice. Flattered. Uh, but I just do not have a pulse on pro football any longer. Um, I just fantasy football burnt me out, so I don't, I don't even know. Um, First pick, Marcus Mariota. Okay, right on. Wake up! What's up, guys? Longtime listener, now a subscriber. Thanks to that amazing dollar promo. Mm -hmm. Much appreciated. Preach. Well, come on, everybody. A little bit about me. I'm from Sumter, South Carolina. I reside in Charleston these days. Famous people from my hometown of Sumter include the only World Series MVP from a losing team, who is Corey... The only World Series, uh, only MVP of a. Yeah, well, you're, give me the I, initials. No, I mean, if you get this, you're just you're the king of the kings. Uh, Br, you're not going to get it, and no one. So it's not it. it's not Brooks Robinson. No, but I mean that's that's a good shot. Uh, Bobby Richardson, never. Oh, for the him. yeah, um, was it the 1960 World Series? He didn't. I mean, are you trying to show off now? You want to look that? Well, up? no. I mean, I know he had a really good World Series uh, in '60, but they lost to uh, on the Bill Mazeroski walk off to the Pirates. But I would have thought Bill Mazeroski would have won the MVP that year. But that makes sense. Guy. Bobby Richardson. Well, come on, Corey. Let's try. Like, don't you don't you dare think I have a blind spot in my knowledge. Well, I should have known that. If that, I should have known Bobby. That's a pretty. Uh, I know. Uh, who was the cowboy that won uh, Super Bowl MVP? Was it? Uh, 
uh, Randy White? There was somebody that was on a losing team that won the Super Bowl MVP. I thought it was Randy White, but I could be wrong. Huh. I'm going I'm to look both of those up. You keep talking. 60 was uh, Bobby Richardson, won the World Series MVP, though the Yankees lost the series in seven to the Pittsburgh Oh, Bikes. there you go. So I got that one right. Sweet. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, look up the quarterback if you want. I'll read the question. Uh, also from his hometown, Lee Bryce, country music singer, and the latest uh, star is John ja Morant. Uh, so shout out to those guys. Ray Allen apparently played high school ball in the area too, but not a native. My question, C.J. Campbell out for the year. Florida State moves Burrell the running back. Any interest in four-star Florida native Kaziah Holmes now that he's entered the portal, or do you think the coaching staff is content with the guys they have, Toafili, Benson, and the commitment, quote-unquote, they have from Samuel Singleton? Toafili seems to be having a great camp, but there's a lot of unknown with Benson, who's had a total of six carries in a short career thus far. Just want to know your thoughts on the running back room and if they should go after someone like Holmes. Thank you guys for all that you do. I look forward to all the awesome content you guys provide. Go Knowles. Is it did he say it's somebody in the portal right now? Yeah, I mean I, I don't know he's not, I, I know he's not saying this actual second they're gonna get the guy. Um but yeah, you know, maybe after the season's over. He went to Penn State, uh left Penn State. Um six foot one seventy five he was listed at I think he might have bulked up to a little bit over two hundred now though, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I think they were in the mix for this guy when he was uh, coming out of high school, but um, I don't know. I mean, I like the running back room. He, nothing about me. I mean, again, he hasn't done anything to where uh, you think he's like the next greatest thing, but either did Jermaine Johnson. Look how that worked out. Um, 56 carries, 254 yards last year. He's a four star coming out of high school. Oh, so he got some, I mean, he got some work. 56 yeah. carries is, is not nothing. Yeah, well, but no, to answer your question, um, I mean, I feel like you're going to lose Ward, but everybody else is back. I just think you have bigger needs. Uh, and this guy, to me, doesn't seem like, like, obviously, if... Uh, Six foot 179. If if a Dalvin Cook clone is out there somewhere, go get him. You you go get those guys. But if he's going to be just, you know, another dude, quote unquote, that's not going to make you much better, but he's taking a, a spot, then I don't know. I think I think you'll just have bigger needs at the end of, uh, at the end of next year. It, by the way, it was Chuck Howley. Was the uh, was the linebacker from the Cowboys in the '71 Super Bowl? Uh, they lost the Baltimore Colts, but he was still named the MVP. My man, um, not not Randy White. I knew it was a Cowboy, but I I thought it was Randy White. Been living a lie this whole time. So I don't know. I mean, four and a half yards per carry. Why not? You know, I mean, you kind of have a better idea of what he's going to be versus a high. So that Sam Singleton's coming off an injury himself. He's not like a a slam dunk uh, next best best thing or next big thing. So. I'm sure they will explore it, though. Uh, we can't ask about him personally, but we'll ask Langston. We'll have Langston get back to you. There you go. There you Island go. Chief, wake up. As most seasons, I am optimistic as to the outcome of the year. Last year, I thought, had we beat Notre Dame, that would have been a very different season. So, humor me. In the fourth quarter, in the French quarter, we put together a drive and two quick scores and put away LSU convincingly. Does mm. Brian Kelly still talk with that stupid accent? What is the chance we win nine? I don't. I don't think the chances of winning nine go up appreciably in my mind unless they win. Unless they beat Louisville the next week, mm. because I still feel like even if you beat LSU, which is a great win, it's the best win of the Norvell era because everybody's watching, um, and it is in a place like that. It's going to be a really cool environment. It's going to be full. It's going to be loud. It's just going to be awesome. If you win that game and then come back and lose to Louisville, what have you really accomplished? I mean, you're two and one. It's better than being zero and three. But the, the you're still right on the you're kind of right on the cusp of what we thought you were going to do anyway. I but know, a but three if they and put, start, but they get, change, but they get, might change things. But if they get two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, put LSU away. That might be like a convincing. All right, uh, they're strong. So is he saying like maybe that changes the whole? The, not just what we think, what like that changes the whole trajectory of the season. Like Probably. in the team's eyes too, like they have more confidence. They yeah, much much like he thought. Better. You beat Notre Dame last yeah. year. Things are different. Which let me also throw this in here. Noel fan six two four. Wake up! Can't believe I'm even asking this. But if the Noles were to start off three and zero, what a fun idea! Would you adjust your win total guess for the season? Thanks and go Noles. So you I would, think court, I would go, right? At yeah, that point, yeah. I would probably go to nine. I would think um, at that point. But again, let's let's cross that wonderful, glorious bridge when we get there. 
Um, because yeah, that's a that's a hypothetical. It's hard to hard to wrap your mind around these days when this team has lost six straight season openers or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I, if they go three and zero with two straight home games coming up, maybe one against a Sam Hartmanless Wake Forest. I mean, at worst, you feel like you're four and one going into that stretch of NC State and Clemson. But I feel like if you've gone three and zero and then you go those, you, you you're five and zero. You have a chance to be five and zero. And again, NC State and Clemson, maybe they're not coin tosses, and it's, you've got a 50-50 shot of winning that game, but you've probably got a 42-58 shot, 40-60 at worst. So you could win both of those games. You could certainly win one of them. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, three and zero, you definitely start dreaming bigger for sure. And th- I guess that's my question, my answer to Island Chief is that I I don't think I would change my expectations personally. I don't even know if that was the question he asked. I wouldn't believe in another extra win or two on the schedule until they beat Louisville. If they were three and zero, that means a that that's so much bigger than two and zero. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, his, his question, you know, the crux of it is, what is a chance we win nine? Then the LSU game, as you said, doesn't really factor in largely the, the Louisville three and zero start. Then you start talking, or even if they're two and one after Louisville, does that like if they're two and one after Louisville, but they lose a Louisville? Versus they're two and one after Louisville, but they beat Louisville. Does that does that change no, at all? No, I, uh, winning three and zero. Needs to be three and zero. So you need three yeah. and zero to start thinking about nine wins. Are four and one? Okay, okay. Four and one, three and zero. Those are the those are the two those are the two uh, win loss records you're aiming for right now. FSU man fifty thirty. Wake up! Is there any way to tell if we will have less penalties by what you guys are seeing in practice? For all of Mike Norvell's attention to detail, we've had way too many penalties. Any improvement expected? I did some research on this beforehand, Corey. I did some uh, reading of these questions. I was just like, oh, my God, 40 of these things. Please tell me there's like a fight and an argument and there's just replies going back and forth. But, no, it's like 40 legitimate questions. Guess how many uh, Guess how many penalties they had on average per game last season, Corey? Florida State? Yeah. yeah. Eight. Well, just a shade under seven, six point nine. That was ninety sixth in the in the in the nation. Mm-hmm. Um, but it came out to one hundred. They were one hundred one in yards because it was those seven penalties were about sixty two and a half yards per game is what it came out to. That's a that's a big number. That's crazy. I can't believe they're still that low. That was one of the things we thought instantly. We thought if there was going to be any magic wand a coach could sort of use. We'd be like, all right, and the, the taggart penalties are over with. Um, I they, they had a saw, stretch. Like, they had a stretch this week, I think, or maybe it was last week. The days just blend into each other. Where there was a little bit of a bad stretch there by the defensive line, where they jumped off sides. I yeah. thought there were false starts, but uh, Norvell kind of like overruled the refs and were like, "Nope, that's uh, that's that's off sides, or yeah, that's off sides. We're moving it up." So, other than that, though, I mean, there's there's been a. We see a little bit of pass interference when refs are out there, um, you know, throwing some stuff when they do one on ones. But the refs aren't out there a lot. Um, I like some of the handsy stuff my guys from the deep south do, um, but that might get you flagged. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're they're still going to be probably a relatively high penalized team. I mean, they're they're ninety six in the nation last year. I mean, I don't know, cut it down from six point nine. I mean, they're at seven. Cut it down to five, or is that asking for too much? And then you're probably like. Within you know the fifty sixty in the nation. No, that's not asking for too much. I mean, you you pay these guys a lot of money. Um, you know the that you, I can guarantee you there are staffs there are staffs that ranked in the fifties and forties and thirties that they go they don't get paid nearly as much money as the guys at Florida State right now yeah. that somehow get their team to only commit four penalties a game for twenty five yards. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a big, uh, point of contention that needs to be, uh, figured out because they are not good enough to overcome. Clearly they are not good enough to overcome, uh, being one of the most penalized teams in the country. So they need to clean that up. I, you would have thought 6.9 though. That doesn't seem like that much. That's Maybe it's just insane. cause I'm used to some games where it's like 12 for 110 yeah. or 12 penalties for 95 yards. I would have thought 6.9 would be like middle of the road. Like right. what's, what's 50th? Are you still on that? Like the the 50th team in the country in penalties per game, what did they have? Um, the 49th had 5.5 SMU. SMU and Arkansas State had 5.58. So, I mean, it's mm. very – it's fractional at that point, you know. 
Like the 31st team in the nation was West Virginia. They averaged 5.15. And then yeah. SMU was 49th. They averaged 5.58. And it's weird. Like I don't, I'm not giving uh, Norbell and his staff a pass by any means, but I don't remember a ton of games where it felt like they were just completely undisciplined and that's why they lost. Or like big mo- big spots where it cost them. Like I, remember I don't that even 2020, remember that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like 2020, that first game against Georgia Tech, there was that false start yeah. Yeah. Um, when they were trying to kind of desperation get back into the you know into like field goal range or get a touchdown to tie or go ahead but i can't recall anything off the top of my head that cost them last year uh penalty wise um i'm sure there's probably something though but. i mean i know they had the uh the two in the, Cle- the the final drive for clemson there was a i think there was a, pa- a personal foul or a pass interference that was kind of iffy i think um but that's the only way. Maybe there was one in a Florida game. I do remember well, Kenny talking about like we can't get behind the chains. Like you know we get yeah. Behind- they did a lot of false starts and some holds and some holds out wide yeah. um, on those little screen passes. That that always came came back to bite them. Always. So yeah, clean that up. Quit quit being first and fifteen or second and fifteen. You're not good enough. Yeah, receivers seem to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more in control blocking, but. I haven't seen the offensive line have bad jumps. They they were pretty disciplined. Atkins has them pretty squared away. But I think most of it has been offsides, jumps, and then some handsy stuff in the secondary. So, um, but I think you know maybe that's that that stuff seems to be a lot more subjective, like your pass interference stuff. So as long as you're not doing the false starts on offense and you're not lining up incorrectly, like we would see some incorrect, we would see some procedure penalties which that was the stuff that was a killer with willie is that you know they'd pop off like a 35 40 yard play but it was like nope that was a legal procedure you know yeah. too many guys in the backfield we haven't seen yeah. that kind of stuff flagged before a play goes off or as soon as the ball is snapped when the refs are there maybe we'll keep a little bit of a better eye on that now because um yeah I, I don't know if we're gonna be able to film as much so maybe i'll keep an eye on that stuff a little bit more thanks yes, for the question right. man welcome to uh, wordchant.com by the way welcome MSU, home man. welcome home a uh, Kurt OFD seventy eight. He's been around for a while. He's with us now here too at Over on Three, man. Uh, wake up, gentlemen. I'm from Oviedo, Florida, home of the often beaten Jeff Driscoll and Blake Bortles. Both were high school seniors the same year. What a year mm. to watch football in this small Central Florida city. Major League Baseball players Mark Bellhorn and Zach Eflin are also from here, and the world famous Oviedo Chickens. Can't say I know about the Oviedo chickens. I'm gonna Google it because I don't know if that's like uh like is it, are they actual chickens that like lay really good eggs or is it okay Oviedo chickens? The town of Oviedo in Central Florida has a fairly large breeding population of wild chickens nesting and generally milling about in the downtown area. Oh, awesome! <laughs> All right, it's like Key West almost. <laughs> that's great. I feel that many people have been uh, giving our Knowles little to no chance versus LSU. I disagree, Kurt. I uh, I mean, they're like a three-point dog on in a road game pretty much. You know, two months ago, I was like, they're going to take LSU down. Now I'm a little bit nervous. Based on much of what I've heard and read from you guys, Jeff, Tom, and the Silver Fox, that's Ira, I think, or maybe it's Austin, I'm starting to think that LSU may not be able to out-athlete us, as some believe. They have all new coaches with new schemes, both offensive and defensive, and we get a whole week to work out some bugs. What chance you give our Knowles to win the game? Thank you for making my ride to and from work much better. I'm going to say they have a 51% yes. chance to win. I was going to say that, too. I like that. I feel like I, a little bit better in 50-50 because they get that extra game. Which is huge. And I do, I'm do. i still convinced. I'm convinced right now. We'll see. I might be wrong. Maybe Jaden Daniels is about to go on a Heisman run. But I think Florida State has the better quarterback. Yeah, probably in that in that night. That night, I think so. We'll see what happens like five, six weeks later as he gets his feet under him, uh, Jaden Daniels. Uh, he probably has better weapons, at least out wide. I think you know I, I might take Florida State's running backs over LSU's. Well, this whole time I, be, I kept thinking the Boutte kid wasn't going to play. And apparently he's running around like he's uh, Jamar Chase, looking like Jamar Chase out there in those practice videos. So that – that gives you a little more pause than maybe a thought that if if their number one receiver was going to be uh, slowed or not playing at all. Yeah, they're also they having got snap time to... issues too. That's cool. Uh, LSU, that is, they're having snap issues. So, oh, are they? Yeah, uh, that was one of the okay. reports that came out. And they got this running back uh, that well, I think it was a five star, maybe on some networks from nineteen, but he hasn't done anything. Noah Kane's only you know, Noah Kane did a little bit at, at Penn State, but nothing uh, that crazy awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's John Emery kids like six one two ten. 
you know, kind of Trey Benson esque, but maybe a little bit. Uh, he's played a little bit more, uh, or at least he got a little higher hopes, I guess. He's more, yeah, I tell you back, he was more heralded. Um, you know, I think he's he missed some academic time. He had an eye injury too that affected his uh, availability. All right, all right. Uh, but mainly LSU's. I forgot, man. LSU's got Mason Smith on the interior, which you know, you got Demetri Manuel, Dylan Gibbons. We'll see what happens at center. Uh, but that kid was like the number three overall prospect in the entire country back in 2020. He's like six five, just a large, large human being. Um, and then uh, B.J. Fabian Ogil- Love is not scared. Well, uh, well but, hey, Fabian Love is not going against coop. him though. I know, but oh, is he a tackle? He's a, he's a defensive tackle. He's a defensive tackle. So I'm saying, oh, he's like, a defensive tackle. Yeah, oh, I thought so, you said he was a yeah. So oh, like well, you know, look. We like Dimitri. We like Dylan. We'll see what happens at center. Then you know, B.J. Ojolari coming down, off fellas. the edge a little bit. Um, so they have a little bit more juice than I thought. I'm really curious to see how this is going to work out because their defensive coordinator is Matt House. Matt House was the linebackers coach for the Chiefs like the last three years. They won a Super Bowl. They played in another. I know they're offensively driven by Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid, and defensively that was kind of their Achilles. And but I don't think they, they didn't have like a lot of a lot of high talented linebackers either. And he was a linebackers coach. Um, they seem like they're playing a lot of base three fours. What we're hearing out of their camp reports. It just there's going to be a bit of a it's going to be a bit of a chess match, man, between Mike and him because I think Brian Kelly knows that Jordan Travis how dangerous he is, having played him two years in a row, uh, you know, in 2020 and 2021. So he knows what Jordan is, and he's going to give Matt House all the information he needs, and then uh, you know Matt House is going to figure out a way to slow him down. He's going to probably look at the Brett Venables, yeah, but yeah, good luck to him. Uh, but it's going to be a bit of a chess match. That'd be real good. Pelt for Mike Norvell, though, to go out there and have his quarterback put up 35 points on an NFL, you know, know, position coach that's now his, um, you know, the coordinator at LSU. That guy, I guess, apparently, too, before he went to the Chiefs, you know where he was working at, I think? Kentucky. Mm. Mark Stoops. The Mark Stoops coaching tree. Mark Stoops. Yeah. Mark Stoops. Never would have thought that, but anyhow. Um, PT, PT Engler, 81. Wake up, I got to admit. I, for the most part, only listen to Wake Up during football and basketball season. But I've been doing that for several years now and will continue to do so this year. Glad I don't think only- you're alone there, PT Engler. We yeah. still give a great we, we still give great shows even in May, um, in, in June and July, but I get it. I get it. I, I don't know that I would listen to us all the time in the summer either. But still download the show. And for my birthday, if you're not gonna subscribe, just grab your spouse's phone and, and subscribe to the podcast on their phone. You know, just, that's a good idea. Just do that and go me. go to the you go to YouTube and subscribe on their phone as well to War Chant TV. Yeah, That'd be like have... a nice little birthday gift for Aslan and a surprise for your spouse. Yeah, when it's... they go to YouTube on their phone, like, oh, what's this Jeff Cameron show? Hmm. Why do I keep? Why does this keep popping up? Why do I keep populating? Uh, who's this bald guy hmm. uh, talking all the time after practice, sweating and fl- uh, swatting at gnats? Just yeah. yeah, play a little trick on them. Like I'm doing it for Aslan. They're like, who? What? Just just yeah. go with it, dear. Uh, do that for my birthday, please. Yeah. Yeah, keep downloading the show. You don't have to listen to it, but download it. That stuff counts. It matters. Dane underscore Owen. What up, dudes? Freaking season's here. I'm from the future. Ooh. The final to the LSU Florida State game is 42 to 17. I've got a squirt gun to your head. Which team scored what? Ah, oh, come on, man. I'm not answering that. I'm just I'm I'm a I'm a pessimist by nature. And I've been covering this team for 5 years, so it's hard it would be very very difficult for me. No, I wouldn't I would be I would be very very surprised if Florida State lost like that. Yes. But I would be flabbergasted if they won like that. I just until I see them win like that, it's hard for me to predict them. It's hard for me to even imagine that. So I guess I would say LSU. But I don't think that's going to happen. So it's a tough question, unfair question. Strike um, it from the record, Aslan. I'll say I'll, I'll, I'll say Florida State if it's forty-two seventeen because Jaden Daniels probably just comes undone and yeah. uh, they're breaking in everything new. It's their first game. Florida State is just hitting on all cylinders. Jordan Travis is running crazy. He's staying in the pocket. He's just slinging it. He's coming out party. It's like his Jameis Pitt twenty thirteen game. Mm-hmm. All right, okay, I like it. Let's do it. And that was close to the score of that game, I think. Yeah. Maui Wowie, wake up! New to the Tribal Council and War Chant, lifelong Knowles fan after growing up on the Florida Panhandle. My question, do you think... He bring- lives in Maui? I don't know. Let me see. Or is that like a type of... 
thing uh, you put in your body. I, I, I don't want to... You have a name like Maui Wowie. The, the, yeah. the question, obviously, should be, if, do you live on the islands? Because he might know Ralph. Yeah. Uh, he wonders at bringing back Frankie Grizzle Malgrat, a.k.a. Red Lightning, back to the FSU sidelines could propel this team to a championship. Apparently, he's still around campus as the head equipment manager for the softball and soccer teams. Bring him yeah. back. Hashtag never forget Red Lightning. I mean, he was, uh, I'll never forget, I'll never forget, uh, finally, you know how Jimbo was back then. Oh, yeah. no, we weren't allowed to talk to anyone really ever about anything, but I wanted to do a story about Red Lightning because he became like a, that, that highlight clip he had, which was nuts. I mean, he's celebrating with the players in the, in the end zone. You don't see ball boys do that a lot. Yeah. But anyway, so he, he, that, that became a sort of viral video of that, that uh, his highlight film. And so that, the night before the ACC championship game, I got him. On, I was able to get him on the phone. I, I couldn't talk to him in person for some reason, but Jimbo did agree. And I promise you, it was a request that had to go to Jimbo. He did agree. I think it's because he trusted me probably um, to, to let me talk to, uh, to, to Frankie. And uh, it was a great story. He was really good. Uh, it was a good story. And I remember him saying, uh, we ride or die together. Cool. Oh. And I sure. thought that was I thought that that was my that was my money quote that was my lead quote is like he's such a part of the team he says we ride we we ride and die together ride or die I don't know how exactly you're supposed to say it but because I'm old but uh, yeah so I, I interviewed him nine years ago right after that video became the one where Kelvin scores the touchdown at Florida and you see him in the background like doing like pumping his arms yeah. like running like he's a 1930 style boxer. <laughs> Just fist up in the air. It's the it's the funniest, most awesome, maybe the most awesome highlight of that whole season. Uh, Noel Child, <clears throat> wake up, gents, long time listener. I miss the galloping ponies, by the way, Aslan. You've been around for a while, then you are a long time listener. It's been years since I had the. What are you uh, going to play effects. at the start of this show? Are you going to play uh, something birthday related? Yeah, maybe a little fifty, maybe a little fifty in the club. Oh, I thought you were going to play uh, Marilyn Monroe singing to JFK. Okay, maybe that, maybe that. <laughs> That would be funny. Uh, may I play the Texas A&M fight song? Well, come on now. It's my birthday. I can do what I'm I sure want I'm sure that's to. a goofy-ass song. <laughs> uh, all right, first time question on the new digs. I changed my member name with the switch. Just felt so right. From Warner Robbins, uh, home of Ron Simmons, Willie Reed. Mm -hmm. Willie Reed Jr., he says. Um, shout out Willie Reed Sr. My question, without getting into specifics that you can't, no matter what player has been lining up for the most reps, has the snapping cleaned up any since early camp? Love what you guys do for all of us living vicariously through you. Go Knowles. It hasn't been as bad as it was that one day hmm. where they couldn't run offense. Um, it, it hasn't been that bad. It's still not incredible. It's not, not 100. Yeah. It's not 100 for 100. Um, but it's been better. Let's, I guess we'll just say that. It's been better, and they are working on it to get even better than they've been. Again, uh, the reporter, one of the reporters at LSU, uh, his, you know, his bullet points tweet was, you know, one of them was uh, snapping has been an issue today at their scrimmage. So yeah, you know, it could be kind of one of those ugly games. I think Jeff even before He got the, to watch the scrimmage? Brian yeah, Kelly scrimmage. lets him watch the scrimmage? It was open, yeah. It was, they couldn't oh. film it, but it was open. Um I mean, oh, they, were filming, they were filming. They were filming one on ones. That was we've never we we haven't been able to film anything really football related um, in a while, other than like Alex yeah. Atkins's guys. Um, so yeah, Brian Kelly, look at that pioneer. Get I love it, man. Train. Good yeah, for him. Absolutely. I hope, I hope more people take after that. Noel Dad Four L, wake up, fellas. First off, I have not felt this much anticipation for a season in a long time. I'm actually going into a season where I feel that we will have more wins than losses. There that feeling go. is awesome. Yeah. Yep. Amen, brother. I'll be honest, though. I felt that way in 18. Yeah. Like, I, because I they, yeah, they, yeah, Francois like, right. was coming back. Yeah. They won, They had a winning season the year before. They I were bringing Cam, a lot of good Brian players Burns. back. Yeah. 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 They they The quarterback was coming back. Yeah. The guy that was so good in 16 was coming back. And... You had this offense that was lethally simple, and it went fast, and it was going to put up a bunch of points. I was feeling uh, pretty good about that. Then we, we saw the offensive line, and that was that. Yeah, I know. Then from that season on, it's like we, we went into every – like a, like 2019 was literally – again, like I was more like you folks. I was way more partisan in my younger days and when I didn't have to do this for a job. 
you know, even 2005, six, seven, like I would go into those years thinking Florida State had a shot at winning the national title. Like they got a shot. Like I like what they've got. Um, but like 20 going into 2019 was like, this is the first year as a Florida State fan where I'm like, there is no chance in hell at all. They are going to win a national title. Uh, this mm. is weird. And then now it's like, just get to a bowl. But hey, yep. win eight games. And then as Corey said in that, uh, provocative pod we did the other day you win eight games you bring all these guys back and then next year you're like all right man let's go to charlotte and if we mm-hmm. win in charlotte let's go to miami let's hang out on the beach for new year's go to an Amen. orange bowl that'd be great his question no dad for l what would have to happen this season for you to legitimately feel that we're going to win the acc next year i feel like this year we are on the win close trajectory and next year is when we start winning big I mean, I, I, it's more than just the record, but I would think the record can't be worse than eight and four. Um, pro, for me to think they're going to win the ACC in twenty twenty three, they would have to go. They would have to at least go six and two in conference, at least. Okay. For for me to think that, but also it's gonna be the way it looks. Like, are they gonna beat some teams thirty eight to twenty, forty one to ten? Will that happen? Uh, again, I'm not expecting it. You don't go from five and seven to dominating teams. That's not the, the trajectory they're quite on right now. But if that were to happen, where they and they're not going to do it every week, but if they if of those six ACC wins, if four of them are uh, comfortable to uh, blow outy, then that's what would make me think that uh, th- they have a, they've really they've really found something. And they've turned a corner. If they if they win every, I mean, it's great to win. You want to win. But if you go if you go six and two in the ACC and five of the six wins are by like four points or six points, I don't know that that portends that next year you're taking a giant leap. You might have just gotten lucky to win some of those close games. Maybe you got some great breaks. Maybe a guy made a really great play here. Or they dropped a pass in the end zone there. Or dropped an interception like NC State did in, in 2016. If that if it's a bunch of close wins, that that won't give me as much. Uh, it's, it's still be encouraged with the six win season in the ACC, but not as much clearly as if if they had some blowouts in there. I don't know if it's my weird, odd nature, but I think for me, it's more of what I'll see from the opposition, like the other teams in this conference. Hmm, like right. if DJ Uyunglele is just not it, and then that kid comes is put thrust into duty, and he's not it. That helps if Miami doesn't end up being this sort of quasi wrecking ball that some people are kind of sort of penciling them in to be. I'm, I'm, I think Kevin Seal is a really good hire. Offensively, the Tyler Van Dyke, uh, Josh Gaddis, new look offense, not sure how that's going to work out, but that defense kind of gives me a little bit of willy. So if if Miami wins, you know, if Miami beats A&M, Miami beats us, or if, you know, Miami ends up winning the conference somehow, finally, 20 years later, or however long it's yeah. been, you losers, um, like that would probably take some wind out of my sails because like you know, Sam Hartman's going to be gone. Malik Cunningham's going to be gone. Um, well, Van Dyke's going to be gone too, though. Remember that's that. That's true. That's a very good yeah. point as well. So I guess maybe how Clemson looks. Um, there you go. That's, I mean, I feel like they're, they, they've earned the right to maybe be the standard bearer to be like the gauge you use to decide if you have a chance to win the ACC and that, yeah, man, if, if Clemson comes right back, I mean, they're ranked fourth in the country crazily Sorry. just I, but they, because they won a lot of close games last year. They they won ten games. They might have won eleven. I think they went ten and three though. Yeah, they um, did. It was so, ten. So they won they won ten games. So they didn't fall off a cliff, but they won so many close games. They beat Georgia Tech like twelve to seven. They beat Florida State essentially by a field goal. They lost um, NC State though in overtime. And they lost they lost some of the clip. They got blown no out no I know, but they, they and they lost. I mean uh, they're they're never going to get blown out probably. But like their win, it wasn't just that they lost three times. They could have lost four or five other times. I feel like. Um, really, I'm trying to think. Like, didn't they? I mean, I think they really had. It's not just Georgia Tech and Florida State. They had like uh, one or two other games where they really came close to losing. Um, so if they go from that team that almost lost six times, Louisville was thirty to twenty four. Um, they put it on Wake Forest though. Uh, Syracuse was only a three point win. Boston yeah, College man. was only a six point win. That's the Boston College one was the one I was thinking oh, about. Boston yeah. College was driving to go to go win the game. Yeah. With a backup quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Dracovic wasn't playing that. So day. that's what I'm saying. Like I think a lot of people looked at their record and were like, oh, they're returning a good amount of guys and they won ten games last year. But yeah, man, they were really close to winning uh 
flipping six. So uh, if they get back to what we were used to in the last decade or so, and, and uh, not only winning the ACC, but winning most games by 21 points, then yeah, that'll definitely affect my outlook on, on 2023. But I, I would be surprised. I feel like I, just, I would be very surprised if they took that kind of leap again this year. All right, let's see if we go in a hurry-up mode, try to knock out some more questions here as we uh, wind things down here. We're going to go back to uh, – we'll be doing live shows on Thursdays once football season starts. Uh, Renegade Express thread will be probably posted Wednesday morning-ish, uh, and then we'll probably lock it down after lunchtime a little bit because we, just, we can't get it to everybody. And then we got the Renegade – we have the live show to go on Thursday, so we won't be able to get to yeah. all of them. But not the Thursday before the LSU game. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. What are we? I don't know. What we're gonna do that week. We'll probably do a Wednesday nighter on that one. I Why would not? Think. Let's. We did a hotel in Jacksonville. We can do it in a hotel in New Orleans. We'll do a live. Man, in when Harris. I get to New Orleans, Daddy's going out. Uh, okay. We can uh, do one in the car uh, on the way there. Can I drive with? Can I ride with you guys? By the way, put put you on the spot in front of thousands of people right now. No. Ah, come on. No, sorry. Pensanola, wake up, fellas! Can't wait to be back in Doak. Michael Alford got all of the Pensacola Knolls fired up on Tuesday. When the final score is 45-17 against LSU in our favor, do you think the main narrative will be FSU is headed back to greatness or LSU isn't that great? Also, do you prefer our neutral site home game to be Orlando or Jacksonville? I'd prefer it to be Tampa. He prefers Jacksonville because it's a couple hours closer for him. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I'd like Jack, and I like the stadium better. I would definitely say Jacksonville there on that on that one. Um and then the first, yeah, man, that if Florida State beats LSU, it, clearly, and I and I don't think it's forty five seventeen wrong. though. He's not saying twenty one twenty. Like if they blow oh, out LSU forty five yes, seventeen, yes, then it, is it? Th- then the yes, it will not be Florida State is back because let's be honest, they're not beating a ranked team. LSU's not ranked either, yeah. so this isn't like they go on the road and beat L- you know beat LSU number eleven LSU in New Orleans. They're beating a team that struggled last year, has a new coach, and is not ranked. There's not being a lot expected of them this year either so no i and i I don't think that's unfair i don't think that's unfair if florida state wins that game even by a wide margin that people would think oh okay but lsu's not that good because i think that's probably that would probably be the case that's interesting because the wins by three touchdowns i think that i think my first instinct was would be my first instinct would be way to go mike love you buddy let's keep it up got to go find something to pour on me my second instinct is yeah, LSU is going to struggle this year. Yeah, I think the the interesting thing is the fact. Obviously, we're not in the SEC. Like if if they lost to an SEC team, it would be oh, Brian Kelly doesn't know what he got himself into. He can't beat SEC teams. Uh, yeah. But it's going to be you know him losing to you know an ACC team. So it'll just be like well, you know they're going to have a down year. Obviously, Florida State's not back. It's just this this just shows you how much they crater. Ed Orgeron's going to be the new Jimbo Fisher. He crashed them, left them stranded. Mm-hmm. Yada yeah. yada. Yada, yada. Sunday gold, wake up. Last year, TCU, who went 5-7, and seven, opened up with Duquesne. They jumped out to a 35-0 halftime lead, ultimately won 42-6. Would a similar score have you at ease, or do you need more? Also, does Norvell release a depth chart next week? Any surprise starters without naming names? In the what game do notes, the they depth usually... Chart? I forget. They does usually he... do in the game notes on Monday when he has his press conference, they'll release like a, a game... like the They do the media game notes. It talks about the opposing team, yeah. Florida State, all this sort of stuff. And they usually have like a depth chart. So, But it's not... It, it doesn't change all that often. And it doesn't really, you know, indicate anything major. I don't... It might for the first game, maybe. Okay. Uh, but that would be it. Like after right. that, I don't know how much uh, detail they, how much attention they pay attention, uh, how much attention they give to the depth chart they hand us on Mondays. I couldn't remember though if like he, is he the one that puts a puts a bunch of oars? Yeah, there's a good amount of oars. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of oars. Well, it's, I mean, but and they're not even for starters. Sometimes they're not always for starters. Sometimes it's you know second the second third, team yeah. guys. It's uh, or this guy or that guy. But yeah, we should get one. I would guess on Monday, right? I think yeah. that's how it normally works. We get yeah. the one the Monday of a. Uh, of game week and we'll be hey it'll all be there we're, we're gonna well as soon as we get it we'll post it on the tribal council and all you dollar members can go see it firsthand fresh off the presses as soon as we get it um and yeah i'll feel if they're up 35-0 at halftime and they end up winning 42 to 6 i feel good i don't need more that's good yeah i'm, I'm fine yeah i agree I'm fine i agree that. you don't need what, what would you need else to, i mean you, what, i don't think putting 70 on anybody makes anybody feel would make you feel any better about lsu it's just you're beating an outman team that came for a paycheck. Again, the only real worry you have is if you struggle. That's where you can actually 
uh, you know, maybe gain some insight as to what this team might be is if they struggle ag against this team. That's where you have pause. But if they win, they're supposed to win. And they're not, if they win big, they're supposed to win big. So I don't know that you're going to glean a lot uh, from the Duquesne game. And like he said, TCU beat the, beat the Tar out of Duquesne last year and still went five and seven. So it won't be a great precursor of things to come necessarily just because you handle them. Jolin Cones wake up with how protective Coach Norvell is about injuries and depth charts, do you think he would ever give the media fake information to throw off an upcoming opponent? I'm sure the Dukes don't have anyone on the message boards or podcasts, but I would not be surprised if some of the bigger teams have analysts that actually pay attention to the opponent's media. By the way, if anybody wants a war chant or headlines after dark, set the speed of your podcast for half for just a few seconds. It's hilarious. I think you speed it up. You speed us up by 50% maybe. Thanks for all that you guys do and go Knowles. I don't know, man. We're, we see everything. Like we we literally, we watch the entire practice. Um, so if he told us something that, you know, there's sometimes he talks about guys having a good day. I'm like, I didn't think he had a good day, but you're the head coach. You know more than I do. So maybe that's him trying to throw guys off the scent. I don't, I don't think he's playing 3D checkers like that though. No, I don't either. And I so when he was saying the half speed, was that you saying that, or was that the questioner? The that was a questioner. He said, "If anyone, uh, by the way, if anybody wants war chant or headlines after dark, set the speed." Oh yeah, can you imagine? We both probably sound like Barry White. <laughs> oh, go hey, slower, girl. Hey. hey girl. I miss. I like Jimbo. the way Jordan Travis looks. Yeah. Jimbo, come home. Um, MX Hudso, wake up. Originally from Columbus, Ohio. Famous people from Columbus, Simone Biles. Other famous people from Ohio. Well, you, you, we don't want anybody from Ohio. Uh, Spielberg, Annie Oakley, Neil Armstrong. Raised in Tallahassee. Well, that's a good list. Well, I mean, but yeah, it's the whole state of Ohio, not just. Well, Columbus. yeah, you don't want to do that. You yeah. want the, you want we want to narrow it down a little, a little, uh, a little more than that. Neil Armstrong, by the way, was a uh, a Purdue graduate. Okay, boiler up. Him and Bob Greasy. Nice. Uh, raised in Tallahassee, I currently live in Salt Lake City, Utah. His avatar is at the state of Utah with a Seminole head on it. Shout out. Okay, to Mexico. nice. What would have to take place this season for Florida State University to host an ESPN game day sometime this season? They'd have to be 5-1 and one going into the Clemson game. At least 5-1. and one. That's the only shot. And Clemson would have to be undefeated. I'm, I might not be able to pull it up fast enough. I, I just I wish my internet was fast. I just wonder what else big games are going on that week. All right, we got it up here. Aslan got it. Um, that's week seven. I mean, there's Wisconsin, Michigan State. They're both ranked right now, but that's not that sexy. That's Alabama, big 10, man. ESPN's punting them, kicking them to the curb. That's true. They're not going to give them any love. Alabama, Tennessee, that's the third Saturday in October. That can't be the well, third Saturday in October. Right, it's right? October 15th. Did they well, no, it would be because October 1st is the first one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Southern Cal, Utah, but they don't want to go out to the West Coast. Nope. Um, I'm telling you, if it looks like Florida yeah. State is like – if Florida State's uh, – Auburn, Ole Miss, but that's – I don't think Auburn's going to be that great. Mississippi doesn't have – Ole Miss doesn't have Matt Corral, so that might take a step back. I think if Florida State's like twelfth and Clemson's third, they they, they will want to they want to be like it'll be a night game. It'll probably be on ESPN yeah. um, or ABC. I mean, I think that will be something they want to promote because it's been so long. Um, so, but I I mean that's a long it's a tough hill to to go up. I mean, you got to get there first, um, and you're gonna have to beat uh, well, you're gonna have to beat five of those first six teams you you face. Um, and I don't know that it would matter if you were five and zero and lost to NC State. I don't know that that would kick you off game day. I think they still might give you a chance and 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 uh, come down. Maybe, but I feel like that's the only your only real chance, right? Yeah, I mean maybe they would do something for the Florida game, but I, I don't know if that'd be like that's a, a Friday game though. Yeah, so that would be game count, day, game day. But like, yeah. you know, they'll maybe have like a a set maybe on Langford Green. Other sneaky games that week: Miami, Virginia Tech. What if Virginia Tech ends up being good, and so does Miami and Penn State, Michigan? That could maybe. Big Ten, though, man. They don't want to do, true, want to do that. You're right. You're right. All right, let's uh, get some other ones here. Um, I mean, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but G. Knoll's back with uh, uh, trenches. Everyone seems to think that the offensive line will be good or averaging against most of our opponents. I agree. 
Um, however, what happens against Clemson or more immediately LSU? LSU has two potential first-round guys that may require a double team. We don't have enough bodies to obviously double team two players every play. One's a five-star defensive tackle. One's a five-star defensive end. They also have a five-star outside linebacker that may be better than both. I assume he blitzes some. Do we think we can run our offense against LSU? Oh, when you put it that way, Gville, Noel. Yeah, man. I mean, they, they ran some stuff against Clemson for two and a half quarters, three quarters. So, you know, neutral field. You know, Mike's calling the plays. Jordan's smarter and better. Um, according to Mike, um, offensive line a little bit stronger. Yeah, this they'll be able to function. I think so. Yeah. I also think it's such a. I know Clemson did what Clemson did, um, but nobody else did. And um, I, I think again, I think if you played the Clemson 21, 2021 defense this year with with Johnny Wilson, Pittman, and uh, Deuce Span, maybe a uh, better Pokey Wilson. Like, I don't know that you can just completely take away the running game and not give up big plays through the air. I just think I think this team is more adept, more able to make big plays through the air if you say the last thing we're going to let you do is run on us. Then I think they can beat you a little bit more through the air than they could last year. Clemson was so good defensively, though, man. It was just, I, I you know, there was not, they just didn't have any answers out why They can't win one-on-ones. They just couldn't. They couldn't block them up front. And they couldn't win one-on-ones outside. I think now they have a much better chance of doing that. But my point was, I, I think that, yes, they have good – They the, it's LSU. They're going to have some very talented defensive linemen. They're going to have talented guys on the defense. Um, but this is such a unique kind of offense because of the quarterback. Because they don't they, – they don't. there's not a lot of guys like this guy. And he does change the way you defend. He changes the way you rush um, as a defensive end. You know, and they can use your strengths against you some. And, and just the, the way that Jordan Travis can, uh, just his, his presence out there can open up holes for the running backs, and you got some good ones, um, I think you will be able to run the offense. I don't think you're going for 40 points. I don't think you're going to run, I don't think you're going to have 550 yards of offense, but I think you can make enough plays. Um, I mean, hopefully be better on third down would be a great thing to do. Then I think you have a real chance to uh, to to at least put I don't know th- four touchdowns on them, get to thirty, and see where the uh, you know see how it turns out. Oh man, but yeah, yeah, you start thinking about it. Like if they lose and like it's you know s- some of the same stuff that we saw against Clemson, like some being outmatched, not being able to win some one on one stuff. Then it's like oh boy, but I don't know. Again, it's early in the season. You have an off week, reset, be angry, going to Louisville shock them still in the driver's seat to win the Atlantic. So, um, Did you say shock Louisville? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's going to be a shocker, is it? Well, I mean, you know, every, you know, Knowles against the world. We all we got. We all. Well, win. you're right. Yeah, let's, let's stun the world. Uh, let's see. Let's maybe try like three more. Uh, Jeff 2000. Holy moly. Well, let's hey, do man. it. Three well, more. Let's 20, do it. We've got 40 something. I mean, we'll get to them on Monday and we'll need stuff to talk about on Monday because uh, you know they're not scrimmaging Saturday. They're going to do a lot of situational stuff, and uh, I don't think we're not. Well, gonna they're doing a mock speak. game. Yeah. They're doing a mock game, right? Is what he said. Yeah, which I warming assume up just, and dressing up. Yeah, doing all that. So. And also, like guys in the booth. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, acting like they're going out to return a kick, the opening kick, all that stuff. Yeah, like a big, huge walkthrough. That'll be the day when they're just doing a quote unquote mock game. That'll be the day when it's perfect blue skies, crystal clear, <laughs> when they're not even out there actually doing stuff. Uh, Jeff 2000, my hometown is Wausau, Wausau, Florida. No one ever famous from here, but Ampley and Trent Forrest grew up 10 miles away. That counts. Take it. Claim it. Chipley. So he's close to Chipley. That's a suburb of Chipley. (laughs) With increased parity outside the top few teams, every advantage matters. Do we have a coaching staff that can win a game by out-coaching the opponent? There have been some obvious problems, but they also kept us in games and at times have won when we had no business staying close. I don't know about that, despite obvious holes in our roster. Uh, I mean, I know you know North Carolina was fifth in the nation. They had five guys drafted after that season. Um, I don't know if that was, you know, we had no business winning that game. I guess North Carolina had no business losing that game. But anyhow, I'll just read the question now as long. 
Uh, where do you think Norvell and the staff rank on the X's and O's? Do we have a staff that can win a game by out-coaching the opponent? Kind of out-coached Miami, right? Miami didn't even know how to use the clock at the end of the game. That was nice. Well, yeah, they, that's right. Not letting the, letting the time run there was ridiculous. Um, it just didn't make any sense. Like, you can still think that your team is going to win, like, get a stand, like a, like, like, don't let the clock run, because if your team gets the stand, you can call timeout on second down, and even if you, you get the two stops, and you, you stop them at the one yard line, there's not enough time for Florida State to get the ball back, you'll have won anyway, it just made no sense to, to, um, to do what he what did he call timeout or not call timeout? I don't remember. I think he he wouldn't call he timeout. Wanted, right? He wanted because he was just like they showed him. He's like bow up, like he just started flexing. He's like yeah, bow he up, wouldn't call timeout. Bow yeah, up. Was, it's like how about you give them a breather, man? But I was more saying that he doesn't even have out coaching. Is like you're not even telling your 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 player doesn't your quarterback doesn't realize there's under three seconds on the game clock. You cannot spike the ball. That too. Yeah. You know that's yeah. that's coaching right there I mean, that's situational yeah, absolutely. awareness stuff like that was that. bad it was a bad last minute that was the last minute of manny's career miami yeah uh, realistically uh yeah man yes yes mike norvell can out coach people this uh, this staff adam fuller can scheme up stuff i mean uh they know football um i don't know that they're incredible strategists because what do we have to go on eight wins in two years mm -hmm. we'll but have those... a much better idea this year because this roster is much closer to real ACC football rosters. So, yes, it does come down to stuff like that. It does come down to game management. It comes down to game planning during the week to find an advantage and take advantage of it. And I think, and I, I'm really guilty of this. Sometimes I, I, I throw coaching into like one tiny ball, which is game management. When do you punt? When do you go for it? What play do you call on third and eight? A lot of it is what you do during the week, finding a weakness on a team and exploiting the bejesus out of it. And they must do that pretty well because... They, I say bejesus too much, and I'm sick of it. I've never said it in my life until the last four months. Okay. I don't know what happened. Where it came from? Who, who introduced it? I, I mean, I've, I've known the word. I've pro I'd say it probably once every five months, okay. usually. But I think it's because I can't cuss. I know I can't cuss. Yeah. And so that's like the safe word that I go to. <laughs> um, but it's a dumb, I hate it. I'm going to stop doing it. That's my, that's my promise to you guys. But, you know, when you run for 220, 250 yards, um, against some of these defenses, when you don't have a great offensive line, you're doing something all right. You're 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 finding mismatches and exploiting it. Um, you're finding running lanes. You're figuring out a defensive tackle that you can push around, or a linebacker that doesn't get to a spot he gets to needs to get to quickly enough. And you do take advantage of that. I do. I mean, they have done that. Um, but yes, they there there aren't a lot of examples of it clearly well, because uh, they've won eight games. Well, the funny thing you say that is that. Second half hasn't been all that friendly to the Florida State offense with Mike Norvell. You know, Correct. They, they hung on their yep. life to beat North Carolina. Um, you know, they kind of squandered. Well, some no, that one they had, Miami. Two, they had two touchdowns in that in that fourth quarter. In that second half, they had two touchdowns. The Miami game, they almost blew a seventeen nothing lead. Well, they did really. Well, no, I'm, came talking, back. I'm talking about Miami. I'm talking about North Carolina twenty twenty, like the number five. Oh North yes, Carolina correct. Team. Yeah, Is right. That, yeah. They were. I mean, yeah. at halftime, I'm like, oh my gosh, we struck yeah, it was gold. Thirty one to seven. Yeah, it was like. Uh, Kendall Browse all over again. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it all that, goes. I, that's a, now that that is something that we will obviously be paying attention to is that second half offense. Um, there have been times where it has just spiraled into nothing, and there haven't been a lot of maybe adjustments to the adjustments that are made at halftime by the opposing defense that have gone real well. Now Dilly Dilly Dilly's gone, so we'll see how Norvell and Atkins uh, um, work in that department because it wasn't always it, it hasn't been close to great the second half adjustments that they make to the adjustments that have been made by the opposing defenses um, so far the, the first two years. Yeah, and listen, man, they've, they've, they're fully staffed now. I mean, they're maybe not Alabama, but they're close. They've got analysts. They've everybody, Every assistant coach has an assistant underneath them. Um, so, yeah, that, that sort of self-scouting stuff should be very familiar and very uh, accessible to them, and they should uh, be better prepared, hopefully, when it comes to um, – you know, second half sort of stuff. All right, let's uh, get these two last ones. Nocturnal Noel, wake up, long-time listener, first-time poster. I'm part of the Buck Brigade. This Noel lives in Tennessee, but I'm originally from Perry. Oh, nice. Uh, famous folks, three-time Super Bowl champ, LeGarrette Blunt, former mm. Noel punter, Super Bowl 34 champ with the Rams, Rick Tootin, and mm -hmm. Don Grant, 
fresh off the heels of participating in one of the biggest W's of all time in Europe in the 40s as part of the Navy, where he was also a Golden Glove boxer, came home and both took the opening kickoff and started quarterback for FSU on October 18, 1947 against Stetson in their first ever intercollegiate game since 1904. Think about that. Like Normally when you're playing an intercollegiate football game, the first one ever, you might feel some nerves. Like, man, I hope I don't I hope I don't screw this up. This is a lot of pressure. When you just got done fighting in World War II, yeah. it's probably all right. Yeah. You're probably a lot of fun. You probably have the you have probably have a, a unique perspective on how uh, how much sports really matters. And did you know Rick Tootin's uh, nickname, Aslan, the punter from Florida State? I did not. I didn't know he had one. Rick Bootin Tootin. Nice. Should have known. I don't think that's true, but it should have been. <laughs> He was also a transfer from Miami. Interesting story. Oh. Uh, interesting little tidbit on Rick Tootin. His, his first few, I think he punted on the 83 National Championship team for Miami, and then his last year he ended up punting uh, for Florida State. Huh. Look at that. Corey Clark, everybody. Trip, trip trip for you. A little Aflac trivia for you. Uh, I want to wish us a happy birthday, Aslan. It's also my birthday Friday. Oh, All there right. you go. There and you go. Clinton. And who else did you say? Coco Chanel. Coco. Did you, did I, did you, have you seen the Bill Burr special? No. The new one on Netflix? No, I need to check it out. He goes into this whole bit about Coco Chanel, which I had no <laughs> idea about. But, like, uh, he, he's basically making fun of how people are getting canceled. All these men are getting, like, John Wayne and Sean Connery for things they said 50 years ago. And they're even, they're dead now, and they're right. getting canceled. Right. And he goes, meanwhile, you never hear about Coco Chanel. And she worked in Paris, um, obviously. She had a storefront. And when the Nazis invaded, she ended up shacking up with a Nazi. <laughs> Living her life with it, you know, until the war was over. And then she opened more stores and made a ton more money after basically the only re she wanted to survive. So she uh, so she fell in love or, quote unquote, fell in love with some Nazi general or whatever their titles are. Well, you got to do what um, you got to do. Stay alive, man. Well, it, it, it's a little more. Uh, I'm not CD? getting I'm not giving okay. in all details. Yes, it's it's not as a. Uh, empathetic as that you know you wouldn't be that sympathetic if you read the whole story but yeah that's uh, coco chanel didn't know never knew that about her I, I remember when sean connery died and like people started unearthing his interview with barbara walters and he was just like talking about roughing up the women in his life and it was just so nonchalant it's like dang sean um but yeah you're canceled now so suck it crazy man too like uh i watched back two back-to-back -back paul newman movies back maybe five or six years ago it was the hustler and it was another movie called the verdict Okay. And he just outright slaps the two female leads in both movies yeah. when he gets mad at them. And I asked my mom that. My mom uh, just turned 80, love her. Um, I'm like, what? What, what what, was going on back then where that was just, she's like, yeah, that's just how they made movies. If men got mad at women, they slapped them. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's crazy. Because I remember her watching that Sean Connery interview with Barbara Walters and just shaking her head and going, what a bleep. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a different time. I feel like we are evolving, Aslan. Yeah. I really do. I feel like we're evolving. Not much. It's incremental. Yeah. But, you know, we're not, we don't just have, I mean, Paul Newman was beloved. It would be like seeing... Uh, I buy a spaghetti sauce still. Do I have to stop buying a spaghetti sauce now? No, no, me? because it's, it was his character doing it. Okay. But I ma imagine going to like, um, I don't know, man, Chris Pratt and saying, hey, in this scene, you're going to slap her. He's going to be like, no, I'm not. I've got a brand. I'm not going to let anybody it's film me a slapping movie. a woman. I know, but I'm just saying they were much more cavalier with it back then. And Paul Newman was beloved and is like, oh, yeah, he just, you know, and, and Eddie Felson was beloved. And he's still, he's just slapping a woman at the end of the movie. Anyway, we've gone off the rails a little bit, but it has been a two and a half hour show. So what do you expect? Um, all right. So my birthday is now share with uh, Bill Clinton and Nocturnal Noel. Coco Chanel. There you go. Canceled. Nice. All right. If you could pick <laughs> one go, player too. or position on this roster that's not a quarterback to make first team all American that would translate to a massive difference in the win column, who would you choose? Johnny Wilson. Mm. I'll give you player and, and that's a position. A wide receiver. Jared Jared Verse. Okay. Massive difference in the win column. Okay. I think yeah, I think I think if Jared Verse is a first team all American. If he's Jermaine Johnson. If he yes, if he becomes like Jermaine Johnson two point Nine wins? Yeah. Well, no, but I, I think that I think that guarantees you eight. I think you're definitely at eight. Okay. You're sitting at eight for sure if you can get a consistent pass rush in every game you play, and and have the bet one of the best players on the field in every game you play. Maybe the best because there were many times where Jermaine Johnson was clearly the best player on the football field. Last one, uh, the Catman. Shout out! I I just wanted to make sure we got the Catman on the show today. 
Wake up, long-time listener, first time posting on the Renegade Express. FSU trivia question for Corey. Who was the last player to return a punt for a touchdown? What game was it? Actually, shoot, I know, I know this. You better know this. I don't know, but it was a it was a nondescript. It was like a game against a. No, 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 no. What? No, it was a it was a it consequential was a... game. Yeah, Fairly it couldn't have been a consequ- consequential game. You want to you want you want to you want to ask like a, you want like a hint or some sort. Um, I mean, Rashad Green did it. No, yeah, but it was you no. Know, I think yeah. Tyler Hunter did it. How about this? We both were working for War Chant when it happened. When Florida State returned a punt, oh yeah, um, uh, our man DJ, yeah, there you go against Miami. Is that right? That it has to be. He didn't give us the answer. Which come on, Kevin, oh. man, you can't ask a trivia question and not give the answer somewhere in there. But it's if you return be, a yeah. punt for a touchdown in a game Florida State loses, I don't count it. <laughs> oh come on! Just goes out my hey, I don't count it. And DJ, it wasn't your fault. You guys had a twenty-seven-seven lead and the ball. It's not your fault. Um, it's, but still, I can't count it. I can't. I feel like there might have been one in like eighteen or nineteen of one of those blowouts, like Louisiana Monroe or I um, I don't remember Delaware, that. where they returned uh, a punt for a touchdown. Well, Delaware I'm was seventeen. Delaware was seventeen. So um, I don't remember. I mean, I don't. It was eighteen that DJ did that. Um, yeah, that's. I remember that. We need to maybe do like the the, the the most like the strongest first halves in Florida State history. And it would be like, you know, like Willie Taggart might be on there twice. Like the Boise State first half, the Miami first half. Eighteen Miami first half. You thought that guy had just like planted his flag and like, man, I am I am taking I am I am grabbing this job by the horns. I'm not letting it go. And I'm gonna win everybody over. Like, all right, man, like this guy's got it figured out. And then, you know, we just keep dropping DeAndre Francois back and just getting sacked and fumbling. And That would have been a big win for Willie. That would have been a big dub. That would have been a real big dub. It wasn't, I was looking up Alabama State. It wasn't Alabama State. Um, DJ Matthews had a touchdown that game. Nasraldeen had an 80-yard interception return. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, they didn't have – Treshawn Harrison had a touchdown in that game. How about that? Huh. Oregon State Beaver, Treshawn Harrison. Maybe Duke. Did they have one against Duke? No, why? Twenty twenty. You, so you're probably believe. right. It probably was. Uh, it probably was DJ Matthews. It's got to be. All right, that's it. We kept you guys so long, uh, but there's so many of you out there. We're gonna get to all of them on Monday. We promise you. Uh, stay connected, to Warchant.com. In the meantime, we'll have uh, practice updates from Friday's practice, uh, practice footage, interviews, observations. Probably, we assume they're gonna probably have a, a pretty decent work day. So get connected to Warchant.com and sign up, everybody. Go to Warchant.com. It's only one single dollar. Uh, thumbs up on the way out. I think we earned it. Corey, thanks for uh, plowing through with us, man. Um, you got it, man. And everybody, go watch The Hustler. Uh, it's a good film. It's just a, it's a, it's rough there at the end, but it's a, it's a really good film. And then uh, The Color of Money is the uh, sequel that came 20 years later. There we go. He's Corey. I'm Aslan. Thank you for listening to another week of Wake Up War Champ, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.